Welcome back to the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. I ask the silly questions on your behalf and Matt, well, he answers them. I do my best. It's all brought to you with that leisureshop.com. And remember to like and subscribe on your favourite podcast app and on YouTube too, which is sponsored by arabasecreative.co.uk. In this week's episode, we're preparing your motor home for winter. It's not as obvious as it sounds with Matt's tips and twists. Do you like that one? Twists. Tips and twists there, oh, I can't Matt. be twisted, not with my back. Including motor home uh, covers. And we've also got a questions and answer sections with questions from you. And thanks so much for submitting them. So let's get into it, shall we? That leisure shop.com and our product of the week. Black Friday, Cyber Monday. What does it all mean, Matt? <laughs> well, if you missed our Black Friday deals, get on the website quick because they're still there as we release this. The Black Friday specials are there at thatleisureshop.com. Cyber Monday. You know what Cyber Monday is? That's today. Yeah, but what is it? It's, it's the Monday after Black Friday. <laughs> yeah, I know, but what's it for? <laughs> I think it was, it's a US-derived thing, isn't it? And uh, it's mainly IT and computer equipment tech. Ah, I see. Yeah, in America, Thanksgiving is the third Thursday in November. Black Friday is that Friday. Yeah. And it's called Black Friday because if you were making a loss, Black Friday is when they put the discounts in and get their businesses into the black. Ah, is that what? I yeah, didn't know that. Yeah, there you go. So it's see. about bank balance. It is about bank balance. Big sale times. Wow. Uh, look at, at that leisure shop dot com uh, for the deals for this year. They are stupendous, and your Cyber Monday deals as well. Are you going to have some of them up as well? They are there today. Yes, Cyber. they'll be there this week. I think. Uh, until we're sold out, unless we are already sold out. Uh, so go and check it out, thatleisureshop.com. Some, as you say, stupendous deals. Yep, Matt is the Cyberman. <laughs> <laughs> with a funny hat on. <laughs> yeah. The Cyberman. Yeah. That was a Doctor Who thing, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Man with a big head and big eyes. Are you talking about me? Are you talking about Doctor Who? <laughs> <laughs> Looked a bit like you, yeah. <laughs> It's the Motorhome Matt podcast brought to you with that leisureshop.com. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. And I tell you what, it's brought to you with that leisureshop.com. Now, uh, what came up a lot at the Ask the Experts panel at the NEC Motorhome and Caravan Show 2023 just a couple of months ago was preparing your motorhome or caravan for winter. Yeah. Matt, it's perennial. We get a winter every year. We do. But boy, this autumn has been wet, wet, wet. The whole year has. Hmm. So has anything changed? What's the importance of your preparation? Well, as you say, it came up a lot. Uh, questions from the floor, I think pretty much every Every day uh, and it was good as we went through the week because everyone added something else in so by the end of the week Sarah who was hosting it could sort of answer the whole thing herself it was great uh, but the big thing I'd say is preparing for it and getting informed um, that would be the number one so that's what we're going to try and help you with today uh, we get lots of questions about covers so people put a cover on their motel or caravan typically only at winter because they're not using it. And people say, are they a good idea? Are they a bad idea? I think they're a great idea. The number one reason is it keeps the caravan clean. So it saves it from uh, UV uh, damage from the sun, stops it from getting covered in bird lime, um, uh, tree sap, uh, and just general dirt. And then the other benefit is one of security. So it means people can't see in. So it blocks all the windows. And a thief, frankly, is going to look at it and go, that's a hassle. I'll go to the next one. Um, sad Just but true. Decode some of that for you. UV is ultraviolet light. It's the damaging That's rays true. from the sun. And bird lime is bird. <laughs> <laughs> I think we knew that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, at thatleisureshop.com, you do actually supply Maypole motorhome covers, don't you? We do. And I've got one of these as well. This is a, this is a caravan top cover or a topper. Um, so I'm going to bring it into shot a little bit. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're not, I'm holding up a box with a picture of a caravan on, and the top foot is covered with a, well, it's like a hat, isn't it? <laughs> it is, yeah. It's a skin that goes over the roof of the caravan or the motorhome. There's a motorhome version too, camper van versions as well, uh, and you buy the right size for your leisure vehicle, uh, and it just covers the roof, which of course is the bit that gets the dirtiest, and then the straps tie down around the perimeter, bottom edge of the, of the vehicle, and hold it on tight. Uh, and these things, they cost a lot of money, do they? You can use them year after year? I think they start around 50, 60 quid. Yeah, you use them every year. They're yeah. brilliant. So, I mean, the, the so they best. Last. They do, yeah. We've had customers using them for years. Um, certainly, covers. I mean, a cover is hard work to put on. 
So my top tip for fitting a cover is get someone to help you, rule number one, uh, and use the wind to help you lift it over the vehicle. Um, uh, because if you can get the wind inside it and then lift it over, do you know what I mean? The wind can be a really good uh, help in getting it over the vehicle. And then find something like a, a washing line prop or a broom handle, attach the strap to it and then feed that underneath because throwing them under you'll never get them underneath and then you attach them and pull them tight which pulls the cover down tight onto the vehicle so two people and some kind of stick it's as easy as that <laughs> yeah <laughs> and try not to get divorced um, yeah you'll be entertainment for the neighbors of anything <laughs> there is a video on of us john at, from maypole and i fitting a caravan and a motem cover on that leisure shop's website uh, and you can see us fitting them and they aren't easy to put on it's very true but a topper you could put one on yourself on your own. They are much easier to what's, put on and off. What's the difference between the top and the So the, the cover covers everything, right the way down right. to the floor. And the the top, top is like the just one that, you just showed us. Yeah, it just yep. covers the roof. Um, and, and that is possible to put on by yourself. The first time you fit either is going to be harder work because all the straps need to be adjusted. And then the second time you come to it, it's going to be a much quicker process because the straps are already at the right length. Um, but they are definitely worth considering, particularly if you're parking under a tree uh, or you just want added security and all the benefits that a cover gives you. So I think they're worth worth looking at. The other big question we got from the floor at the big show was, do they scratch the vehicle? Now, my advice is wash it before you put the cover on, and that loose will get rid of any loose dirt, uh, and uh, make sure you fit it as tight as you can, and then it's not moving around on the vehicle, which could risk scratching the windows, particularly if there's dirt there. But the covers, you mentioned the Maple ones, we sell loads of them. I mean, they're so popular and they're such a great price. But they are, they're four-ply, they're breathable, so they're not waterproof. So water will permeate through the cover and that's to allow the vehicle to breathe. Uh, and the inside is really soft, so they don't scratch the paint or the windows. We've had covers on motorhomes and caravans, even our own, in storage for many winters None have been scratched, none at all. Uh, obviously, when you take it off, be really careful about not letting it drag on the ground or the grass, picking up dirt, because that is where you're going to get into a problem. And I mentioned about being breathable, which means the vehicle will get wet. Um, but by being breathable means it allows the vehicle to not get damp inside. So this is the other concern that people have. And frankly, it's a bit of a myth that a cover will mean that you get damp inside the vehicle if it's breathable you absolutely won't um really important to understand that but it'll still get wet still get wet yeah um, but by being breathable means it can dry out right i'm with you and do you get any problem with condensation you know even in winter it's mostly cold but if you get direct sun uh, on something it can heat up underneath is that damaging for your motor no because it's, it well it could be but because if you're using a breathable cover that condensation just evaporates that's the great thing about a breathable cover if you're using a bit of tarpaulin different story and I don't recommend using tarpaulin. That definitely will scratch. Or plastic sheeting. Or plastic sheet. Same thing, really, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And that will move around and flap and billow about. It's not fit for purpose at all. All right. So where should I store my wonderful motorhome or caravan over this winter? Yeah. I could put it on the drive. The neighbours don't really complain. It, it, it's OK. And uh, the mother-in-law has to visit for Christmas, so she can go in there, can't she, for Christmas. But, <laughs> but uh, well, put, whether she likes yeah, it or not. Putting all that aside, what's the best thing to do? Keep well, it at home or a storage site? Yeah, that's a very good question. So if you've got a secure storage facility, then that may be an option. Um, for me personally, if I had a drive, I could put it on and keep an eye on it because a lot of maintaining a vehicle through the winter is about maintaining it. That would make it very convenient. Um, speak to your insurance company as well because they may have a preference on where you park it. Uh, they might prefer it to be in a storage site. They might prefer it on your drive. Caravan Guard, in a recent interview, we discussed this and they give a great tip, and I've mentioned it before, is drive in nose in to the space and then turn the wheel on a full lock makes it very, very difficult to steal a motorhome. Uh, obviously, you can't do that with a caravan very easily, uh, but um, because the wheels don't turn. <laughs> well, only the jockey wheel. I suppose you've got motor movers, you could drive it onto the drive nose in, and that would be a great deterrent as well because it then can't be towed out very easily at all. Um, and then remember the security. So the more security features you can fit to the motorhome that are visible, the better. So one of the things I always find odd is when people fit a steering wheel lock or a clutch lock or brake lock, or handbrake lock, you know, any of these things, or they're turning the seats and padlock chains through the seat back and the steering wheel, and then they close all the blinds. 
what that was I just think it's silly you know a thief coming along is already done then a thousand pounds worth of damage breaking the window to get in and then goes oh <laughs> and wanders off so let them be visible uh, uh, what do you call it the wheel clamp the, the Denver shoe Denver shoe that's it Denver boot the Denver, Denver boot. boot yeah so a wheel clamp's a really good idea and consider two of them why not um, I, we have someone in storage who's got a massive motorbike chain threaded through the alloy wheel. What a great idea. You can't drive off with that. Uh, and, and visible security is really, really key. And consider the most expensive security you can possibly afford. So, again, Maple, they do a, a stronghold range of wheel clamps, which means they take 20 minutes to cut through with an angle grinder. Well, you would hope that 20 minutes of an angle grinder going on your drive, somebody's going to go, what's going on over there, and call the police. So go for the most highest rated uh, piece of security that you could, your budget will stretch to. Good tips there. And remember, if you're living in a fairly new build home, do check the covenants on your property <clears throat> and some of the older ones uh, because uh, there are also council restrictions sometimes on how long you can keep a caravan or motorhome uh, on your drive or yeah. hard standing. Sometimes it's as little as six weeks a year. So do check it. Uh, some people might not have any restriction uh, whatsoever. Other winter threats there, Matt? Well, you've talked about thieves a little bit and uh, I've yeah. got somebody down the road from me who's got a beautiful motorhome and they park it uh, nose out to the road but park their car at right angles in front of it that's a good idea yeah. good tip yeah yeah it's a good idea and, and even a drop post in front of it's a good idea mm. i would suggest to them they turn it around see what they say yeah. <laughs> what's it got to do with yeah. you hello matt says <laughs> <coughs> bog so, off so that, that's the thieves <coughs> and always be wary of them you know the thing with, with all thefts it's only a very small amount of people uh, that are actually doing this stealing but they can cause such a lot of uh, heartache and harm to you oh it's horrible yeah, yeah. it's horrible having a motorhome or caravan stolen um, and we've done previous episodes on on this and insuring it and the security features that an insurance company might require of you just make sure you're you're obliging with that so if the worst did happen you know you're going to get you're going to get paid out other threats though other than thieves of course is damp and Water ingress, so water getting into your vehicle is its biggest threat. We've talked about that before. Uh, and really, the only way to ensure against that is to keep a very close eye on it. It's worth getting a habitation check or damp check done before the winter. And then if you can afford to, do another one after the winter and just see how things have progressed, if they have at all, particularly if you think you've got a problem. But if you can get to it regularly, that's the best thing you can do, is to keep a close eye on it. Get the heating on. Just fire the heating up for 10 minutes, half an hour, and get the air moving. What causes mould is air that's gone stagnant. So in all the soft furnishings, you know, rotate them, tip them over. Better still, take them out, put them in the garage at home uh, if you can. Take the curtain down um, and and try and get as many soft furnishings out of it because they absorb all that moisture and hold the damp in the vehicle which can then penetrate into the walls and if you've got an external problem where the sealant has gone and water gets into the wall it may be some time before you realize that has happened it could be when you're away in the summer you think what's wrong with this wall it's gone a bit spongy or you've got the little spikes on the wall where the walls dried out that's a sign that you've had damp so it needs to be investigated as early as possible another threat is rodents ah rats yeah. and meese i saw a picture on facebook only this week of someone had a fuel pipe they were inspecting their motorhome prior to travel and they clocked a fuel pipe had been eaten by something i suspect it was a squirrel uh, and i was blimey I, i'm not sure i've ever inspected my fuel pipes you know before traveling uh, they would have found out it was leaking pretty quickly, I guess, because it either wouldn't start or there would be diesel all over the floor. But something had a meal out courtesy of their diesel fuel pipe. Um, so it's definitely worth checking underneath. Um, mice seem to love seat belts. I don't know what it is about seat belts, but they can get in and they just chew through the seat belt. So check the seat belt. Check near the mount at the bottom, the bit you don't look at. Um, because if a mouse has chewed through that, your seatbelt will cause the vehicle to fail the MOT. Um, so just you know, check the air filter. It's worth taking the air filter housing apart. I've lost count of the number of motorhomes that we've changed the air filter and in it is a mouse nest, you know, where someone's, a mouse has had a little family and they've made themselves a little home. I bet they were toasty warm in there. Um, and, you know, we have to pick all the air filter remnants out. It's worth definitely lifting that lid off and having a look inside and just have a good look around the bonnet space up under the wheels and just check because if they've chewed through a brake line, 
you won't know that until you try and stop and it all goes wrong. So, yeah, mice are another one. What is it about rats and mice? And They, they love the insulation, don't they, in electrical wires? Yeah. What is it? I mean, I, I uh, my vacuum cleaner at home, you know, one of those Henry ones? Yeah. And I bought a little little clip. So I, yeah, you, the you vacuums know, are available. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know you always have difficulty with the long bit you know, that you, that well, that you, you do. hoover with. And you want to clip I have it no idea I what bought, you're talking about. I bought about. a little clip so I could clip the long bit of the hoover to the body of the hoover okay little plastic thing which people have 3d printed uh, i went there the other day absolute truth and it had been chewed by mice in the garage really where it was yeah nothing else had been touched but just this certain sort of soft plastic they love it i don't know what it is about it it's strange isn't it? it is odd isn't it they're yeah, it's strange creatures. what they'll eat i mean when we talk about putting it down for uh, for winter is it is it worth you going in and visiting it opening the doors and moving around does that help yeah, definitely. keep the rodents out uh, well, it would disturb them, certainly. Um, I mean, even spiders can cause a problem. If they nest in your in your boiler flue, we've had boilers not fire up in the spring in the hire fleet, and we blow it out with an airline, and out comes a big spider's nest in the spider body, you know, that they've shed. Um, and that can cause all sorts of problems with boilers. So I think going in as regularly as you can will disturb anything that's trying to make a home in there. But food, for goodness sake, take all the dried foods out. Don't leave anything exposed. You know, that that half-eaten pot noodle, get it in the bin. Well, it's true because mice and even rats, they're small creatures. They don't need a lot of food. So you say, oh, it was only a little bit. Well, that's enough for them to live on for two weeks. Yeah, it is, yeah. And you can buy deterrents as well, of course, and humane traps and you know, sprung traps to try and catch them. But just do everything you can. And we, we, I remember we had someone ask us a little while ago about storing a motem on grass. Uh, and I said, you know, one of the biggest concerns I have is not the slope, but the grass it's on, because mice love grass. Um, our storage facility is all uh, like scalpings. It's all stone. It's called type two. And mice and squirrels hate running around on it because it hurts the pads on their feet. Um, and that's why we use that surface rather than a very smooth tarmac or, of course, grass, because they don't like it. Um, and also being next door to a bird of prey centre helps because they're flying the owls <laughs> and the falcons around. If they see anything, uh, then, uh, yeah, they're right down on it. Another thing I have trouble with, actually, not in a motorhome, but in my water butts, uh, <laughs> in, the, yeah, in the pipes for them, you know, the pipes that connect them to the downpipe. In your butt pipe. Uh, oh, yeah, butt pipe. <laughs> Ocean-going slugs. You know the biggies? Oh, yeah. They'll shelter in them for winter. So, have you ever seen a slug in a motorhome or a caravan? Ocean go. Yeah, the, yeah, the biggies. The but big ones. But you don't ones. live near the sea. The big ones. The yeah, really, I know, the fat boys. Oh. We get them in the house, we get them in the kitchen floor. Yeah. Oh, this long trail of where on earth did you come from? Oh, horrible, yeah. horrible things. Um, so let's go back to the beginning because we didn't really explain driveway versus storage yep. site. We've talked about leaving it on your drive. What about the storage site? Yeah, so in a storage site, you want to make sure that the site you're putting it on is secure. Um, if it's a Kosoa registered site, that would always be my recommendation. Uh, and go for a silver, gold or even platinum site if you can. We're a silver site for valid reasons. Um, and uh, you know, our security is very good. Uh, but everyone has free reign access with a secure gate key, which means we lose points, so we only score silver. CCTV lighting, regular inspections by the owner. If the owner lives on site, that's even better uh, because there's somebody there most of the time. So if you're going to be storing it in the storage site, make sure your insurance company know and they know the Kosoa number and the postcode so they can keep you insured. Yeah, but going back to damp quickly, we didn't mention your little uh, maracas. I mean, maraca, yeah, with control yeah, yeah. boxes, yeah, yeah. yeah. These are really clever. So these are little what, plastic boxes that have a, uh, an absorbent material in that absorbs the damp. And I was always very cynical about these, frankly, for years. And then I put them in one of my many cars, which you love to take the mick out of. <laughs> but I put them in there uh, last winter, and you know, no mould at all. I mean, the, the gear stick, steering wheel, seats, all covered in mould. Use these things, none at all. Were, were you mouldless? I was mouldless. Were you? They fill with water, and this stuff absorbs it. And then you just empty it out and it dissolves away. And then you top them up, you buy a refill bag. But they're really good. They actually work. And the great little things, the, the, the best bit is the tiny little boxes you can put in all the cupboards and all the nooks and crannies in the caravan or the motorhome. And it keeps the damp out of the cupboards. And my advice is always leave all the cupboard doors open. 
um, and uh, but plop these things around the place and they really do work. And they're only a few quid each, aren't they? Oh, like two pound fifty or something. Yeah. So buy ten or twenty of them and uh, keep everything nice and dry. And just quickly mention, and we all know this, we learned this at school, but water when it freezes expands. So it's, if it gets really cold, that's the other big threat is leaving water in it. So if it's going to get cold, water will expand when it freezes and it's going to split taps. It's going to split pipes. So it's about getting all the water out of it as much as you possibly can. Drain down all the taps. Uh, drain down all the the pipes and the water the boiler um the water tank waste and fresh if you've got one toilet cassette make sure that's empty as well i'd consider taking it out taking it home putting it in the house in the garage somewhere where it's not going to freeze and get frost damage good tip that one and don't put it off because oh it's all right it hasn't been a very cold winter and then you get like two or three days of minus three four fives and tens and that's when the damage gets done isn't it if you, if you don't drain it down yeah that's right make sure you leave all the taps open as well so if there's water in the tap it can expand out of the tap and i've i've gone into motems and seen ice you know dripping out of the tap where the tap's been left open and my tip is put it between hot and cold and open it then run it dry and then turn the pump off Lots of electricity in modern motorhomes, specifically solar panels and batteries. And I suppose that presents another problem for storage for winter. It does, yeah. What do I do with my battery? Do I leave it on? Do I take it off? Um, keeping them charged is the key and keeping them well charged, which you can either do by hooking up. Um, solar panels are just amazing these days. Um, we, we've, we've even got little booster panels um, that they're called maintainers, so you just hook them on the battery or plug them in a cigarette lighter, take a charge from the sun and put a trickle into your starter or leisure battery. And it's enough just to keep it above 12.4 uh, volts, which means it's starting to go flat. Uh, and and if you can get to it and start the motor as often as possible. Uh, but remember, starting it means you probably need to run the engine for 20 minutes to, to, to compensate for the drain you've taken by starting it. The other thing to remember is on very new chassis, they have what's called a smart alternator. So the alternator won't kick in and actually charge the battery unless the engine is being revved. So you know, t having it a tick over isn't really doing anything. So my best advice, take it for a drive if it's a motorhome and you can. It moves the tyres and the brakes and frees everything up um, and just get all the systems in it moving and working. The heating as well, as I mentioned earlier. But take it for a 40-minute drive. Better still, go away for the weekend. Go and use it. It's a great time to go away. Yeah, drive the mother-in-law out to the country. <laughs> Uh, OK, then, um, we have got a little tip, which is we're not going to give the answer away here. You've got to do some work to get hold of it, haven't you? <laughs> we can go to thatleisureshop.com forward slash winter and download a whole guide. Of, there's a video there as well, but there's a, a whole ebook guide and a checklist. Uh, and it tells you what to do with your motorhome or caravan, get it ready for winter and find out why I suggest leaving a piece of chocolate on the floor of the van. Mm, there you go. I think we've covered everything there, haven't we, Matt? I'm sure there's a lot more we could cover, but go and get the guide. Everything is in there. It's really useful. It's completely free. All we ask is your first name and email address, um, and you can download that. And there's a checklist you can print and tick off as well. And that's at uh, thatleisureshop.com forward slash winter. That's thatleisureshop.com forward slash winter. It's the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. And it's all brought to you with thatleisureshop.com. It is our Q&A question and answer where you pose the questions and expert Matt Sims answers them. First of all, we've got Lewis in Wigston. Hiya, boys. It's Lewis, the lawn care daddy from Wigston, Leicester again. I bet you're fed up of hearing my voice. Um, congratulations on the, uh, the Caravan and Motorhome show. Looks like you had a fantastic time. And I was gutted that I couldn't come and say hello to you. My daughter had other ideas and we only got to spend an hour there as she wasn't very well, bless her. Uh, so there's always next year. Um, basically, my question to you is we've got um, a caravan, which we've only owned uh, for the past couple of months. So this is our first winter and it's currently in storage. Um, doesn't have a cover over it and I have drained it down and put damp traps inside, but the fact that it's going to be sat in the storage yard from now until mar roughly March time next year, kind of open to the elements and whatnot, something doesn't sit right with me thinking, you know, you've got the rain and the wind um, howling against it. I know they're built for it um, and watertight and everything, but I'm just thinking, is it worth buying a cover? Now, obviously, because we go away in it as and when, as and when we can, um, we will 
probably not use it during the season. But on the off season now, for the next five months, it's not going to be covered over. And I don't know whether it's worth buying a cover or not. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether you think they're a worth it um, buy or not. Keep up the good work, men. Really enjoy the podcast. Cheers. So that was Lewis in Wigston, a loyal and long-time listener. And that's all the L's, Matt. Lawn Care Daddy. I think that's his <laughs> Instagram. Long- I think that's you, Lewis, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to get to see you at the show. I hope your daughter's better now as well. As you say, as always, next year. We'll be there in February. Um, uh, we have, well, come and visit us at the shop. Be lovely to see you. Cover, should I fit one? Well, as I said earlier, I love them. I think they're a great idea. Uh, and I, I think it would be worth it. Uh, it would be a shame that you couldn't get to your caravan for the whole of the winter. I think you should need make the effort to try and get there and check on it and keep an eye on it. One of the things to mention with a cover, which I didn't mention, is solar panels. So they're a great way, obviously, of keeping the battery charged. But obviously, you put a cover over the caravan you've totally ruined the effectiveness of a solar panel. You've covered them. You've covered it. Um, and people often ask, can I buy a cover that has a hole in it with a clear patch or clear panel for my solar panel? And yes, you can. You would need to go to specialised covers or Protec. Uh, there are other companies as well that make them. And they will bespoke tailor you one that has that clear panel in exactly the right place for your solar panel. So if you need your solar panel to keep your batteries charged, then that would be a really good idea. And on that point, if you've got a tr- tracker on the caravan or indeed on your motorhome or even an alarm that's going to rely on the battery staying charged and the the alarm particularly is going to flatten the battery very quickly Uh, so it might be worth considering either a solar panel outside of the cover so a portable one laid on the roof or net on the floor next to it or cut a hole in or have a hole cut in your in your cover so that you can give access um of the for the solar panel to the sun Fab, thanks, uh, Matt. And thanks, Lewis, uh, in Wixton for your question. Ron Bean has been in touch. Hi, it's Ron Bean. Uh, to do with the towing at seven and a half tonne uh, category motorhome and the weight restriction of 750 kilograms subject to your licence and whether you've passed a test for an E. Could you please cover that? I'll uh, speak to you soon. Thanks. That's Ron Bean being in touch. Get it? Ron Bean being in touch. <laughs> thanks, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> to do Ron Ron Bean. Very uh, good. <laughs> Such, he's um, never heard any of that before. This is one of our, you know, this is one of us like me, Keith Gooden, beef pudding. Get it? Uh, so anyway, look, <laughs> listen, uh, this has come up so many times, hasn't it? Uh, it has. Matt, so just explain what the issue is and what <laughs> Ron wants to know. Okay, so you and I, Keith, are old and we passed our test before 1997, which means we could get out of our Mini with our L plates on and go and drive a seven half tonne truck. So we can drive up to seven and a half tonnes. Uh, however, January the 1st, 1997, if you pass your test after that, you were limited and could only drive up to three and a half tonnes. This was a European directive. At this point, we're part of the EU. And actually, to be fair, seemed a fairly sensible thing that you couldn't go and drive a big green parcel machine. There's lots of lorries say on the back. Uh, and so you were restricted to three and a half tonnes and you had to do a test um, to drive more than that. And you could only tow up to 750 kilograms behind you. Uh, the law was changed recently. I think it was November 21. Uh, that The B plus E entitlement, which is the ability to tow over 750 kilos, was relaxed. So now you could drive up to three and a half tonnes. And if the vehicle can, you could tow up to three and a half tonnes. So a train weight of seven tonnes. Now we have a whole podcast on this with Sharon Sparks from Mendip Towing uh, and she unpacks this a bit more. Those with a C1 entitlement could only tow up to 750 kilograms and that is still the case. So right now if you've got a three and a half tonne motorhome you can tow three and a half tonnes provided the motorhome can do it. There aren't many that can but certainly you can tow a significant weight. However, if you upplate the motorhome, so raise the weight of the motorhome to say 3,800 kilograms because you want more payload, so the more ability to carry weight, you can no longer tow over 750 kilograms. So you can't tow that 3,000 kilogram or three ton trailer because you're suddenly in the realm of C1. I hope this makes sense. Does it make sense to you? No. You've fallen asleep. (laughs) Give me a problem when you finish. So here's a classic example. John Gooch, a lovely John from Life Beyond Bricks, who helps us with the shop at the shows. And John and Tash will be at many of the shows with us next year, which we're really excited about. Thank you, guys. 
John has uplated their Adria Sonic from three and a half tons to four tons. I think it's four tons he's gone to. We have a trailer that we put all the shop stuff in that probably weighs two and a half tons, and we can tow that behind a motorhome. John's motorhome can tow that, but John can't because he's uplated his motorhome to over three and a half tons. And because he doesn't have a towing license to tow over 750 kilograms, because his motorhome is now C1, he can't tow the trailer. If he downplated his motorhome back to three and a half tons, he could tow the trailer. He wouldn't have any payload in the motorhome, but it just seems daft. And I guess it's just where the line's been drawn. There has to be a threshold. But now, frankly, the law's become a bit of an arse. That's the expert's opinion. There you go. <laughs> back to your back to your butt pipe. <laughs> there you are, Ron. Ron Bean. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, then get back in touch and have another ask, Matt, and I'll try and explain it again. <laughs> Timothy Long is in Bista. He says, I recently purchased, and this will be my first winter. My query is based on the fact that the motorhome is fitted with both a tracker and an alarm. You mentioned this uh -huh. earlier. The yeah. tracker provides me with some remote data on battery charge. After two weeks, the main battery has dropped to approximately 12 4.4 volts and so I am concerned about how this will survive if it's left unchecked. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I want to remove the battery due to the alarm and tracking setup you need a battery to power them uh, we store the van off site and there's no external power. What are the best options? Very good question, yeah I did mention this earlier. Um, so <clears throat> I would say a solar maintainer is one I prepared earlier. If you're oh, my on goodness. YouTube. Yes, here it comes. <laughs> this is one from the shop. I stole it from the shop before we started recording. You just lie this on the dashboard. It's a tiny solar panel. It's got crocodile clips you put onto the battery or a little cigarette plug. You plug it in your cigarette lighter. Not allowed to call it that. No, it's 12 volt supply. A 12 volt accessory socket. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I want it to be a cigarette lighter. No, you don't. <laughs> Not that I smoke. Uh, and this will make a massive difference to keeping the battery charged. And, of course, you can use it on your leisure battery or your starter battery. Better still, get a solar panel with an MPPT controller. A what? <laughs> Don't ask me to explain that. Uh, but basically it stores the power and regulates the power from the solar panel going into the battery. They're much more expensive. We do sell them at thatleisureshop.com. There's a brand called Photonic with a pH, and they are superb. They fold out. And you can connect one of those to the battery, and that will keep it charged. Um, or get a solar panel, fix the roof. You know, Bond one to the roof and have a permanent feature of a solar panel. Bear in mind our comments earlier about covers. The other thing to do, and really cost-effective tip is buy a second battery. So you need the battery on there for your alarm and for your tracker. And if your insurance company require both those features, this is really important. Take one battery home and charge it and then go and swap it. And then you've always got a battery on the vehicle and you can go and maintain it by charging it at home. But always best advice is to charge it. Don't leave it unattended when you're charging it and put it on a metal tray uh, and put it somewhere where you know, there's not going to be any problem if something goes wrong with the battery whilst you're charging it. Why does it have to be on a metal tray? Uh, that's often an insurance requirement for house fires. Did you know that? No, I didn't. We have that restriction here that if we're charging a battery, it has to be on a metal tray. Otherwise, if it blew up, then we wouldn't be insured. First I've ever heard there of one. Well, Timothy and Bista, I hope uh, you uh, got what you needed from that question. Very quick one before we finish. We, we, we mentioned parking on your driveway uh, uh, and also uh, storage uh, for overwintering your caravan or motorhome. Uh, how much does it cost to do the storage? What's the, the typical uh, sort of... It's a good question. Uh, many storage sites, it depends on the facilities there and also there are some real vagaries around the country on this um, but anything from a pound a day um, we are 500 pounds a year 499 a year for basic storage we do offer maintained storage as well uh, so we have different plan levels where we will go and keep an eye on the vehicle for you every month uh, and on one of the plans every week we're hooking it up keeping the uh, batteries charged we put the heating on rotate all the cushions move all the curtains about so that all the air is moving around so that's typically, I reckon you're looking between 300 and a £1,000 a year, depending on the storage plan and where you are in the country. Fabulous. Thanks very much, Matt. If people want to get in touch, to pose a question, what do they do, Matt? Really, really easily. We would love it if you did, uh, because you're, I'm sure, as I've said before, you're not the only one wanting to ask that question. So please do ask them. No such thing as a daft question, only the one you don't ask. And you can pose it at mhmp.info forward slash ask Matt. Just click the orange button, record your question. Please tell us where you are in the country, or you can, if you'd rather not record your voice, fill out the form and we'll read it for you.
Tell us where you are. Yeah, absolutely. And that's mhmp.info forward slash ask Matt. You can leave us a review at mhmp. That's Motorhome Matt Podcast. You get that? mhmp.info forward slash review. Very clever. Well done. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe on YouTube as well, which is sponsored by aerobasecreative.co.uk. And share, share, share with your friend, friend, friend. Have you got a friend to share it with? No. <laughs>